All right, so Marketing Taxonomy 101. I'm gonna kick things off in a kind of typical fashion and tell you a little bit about myself. As you know, I'm the Director of Solutions Consulting here at Clarivine, but what does that even mean? What do I actually do? I find myself having to explain this both professionally and personally on a daily basis. And that's throughout my career, not just during my two years at Clarifying. To be fair, in a role like this and when building taxonomies, you're having to explain the what, the why, the how to a wide variety of audiences, all with different experiences, skill set, and aptitude for analytics. I'm very close with my family. Uh, I'm one of four girls, and you could probably ask each one of my family members what I do for a living. And they'd probably all say something totally different and definitely not what I do. To give you some context, a few years ago, I was at a family friend's Christmas party and my mom was chatting with some friends and I could hear going through the typical, how are the girls? And my mom goes through the lineup and she gets to Christine. Oh, so Christine, yeah. You know how when you're talking about something around the Alexa or the Siri, and, and they're listening and they're collecting that information. And then you see an ad about what you were just talking about. Yeah, Christine does that. Immediately, the friend's face looked petrified, like I was some sort of spy. And that was the day my mom stopped trying to explain what I do for a living. Which brings me back to our original question. What do I actually do? I know I'm not alone. That's why we're here today. Marketing taxonomy is a huge part of what I do. And being posed this question so frequently, I'm constantly trying to find ways to better articulate the problem that I help clients with and what I've developed such a curiosity and passion for. I think I've found a pretty good one as of late. And as I explain what it is I do in the world I live in, my hope is that you'll have a clear understanding of what is a marketing taxonomy and how to create one for your organization. So I stumbled on this new analogy as I was talking to an old colleague, actually. We were talking about data foundations and she said, Christine, just keep hammering that terminology, data foundation into people's minds, it'll catch. Then the next day I found myself using phrases on some of my client calls like tools in the toolbox as my boyfriend was on the phone in the other room with his builder as he's about to close on uh, a new home this week. So the wheels in my, in my head start turning and I'm thinking about construction and I immediately start thinking of how to explain this hypothetical analogy to my dad. He's worked in construction my entire life. He built the house I grew up in and they still live in to this day. If anyone could tell me that I'm totally off base, it would be him. So as the wheels continue to turn, I realized that while from the outside, it looks like my dad and I operate in two totally different professions, analytics versus construction, we're both builders. I just build houses for data. My dad builds actual houses. And as I learned more about the process of building a house, I was even impressed at the natural parallels between building a home and building a taxonomy. Both for, be it a marketing taxonomy, product taxonomy, content taxonomy, you name it. They all require similar steps and face similar challenges throughout the process. While the two processes processes are very similar, one key difference is that the term marketing taxonomy is more challenging for people to grasp than buying a home. Pick a place, buy the location, build the house, live in the house. Bing, bang, boom. Now say that to someone who's actually bought a house and they'll probably laugh in your face. So despite all of the nuances, the inspections, the bidding, the contracts, all of these components involved in the process, we can simplify it in our minds to the end result, a home. So that's what I started telling people. I build homes for data. Let's break down marketing taxonomy like we're building a house. If people can understand how to build a home, they can understand how to build a marketing taxonomy. So what is a marketing taxonomy? Marketing taxonomy, or any taxonomy really, is defining, governing, and standardizing a set of elements associated with a key. You can have a product taxonomy, an asset taxonomy, placement taxonomy, track and code taxonomy. The key concepts to creating a good taxonomy are, one, ensuring the elements or metadata 
attributes are valuable to the end user or the organization, aka they're going to use the data to optimize and for analytics. You have the tools in place to enable teams to follow the given taxonomy. And you have clearly set definitions on what that taxonomy is and where it applies. The marketing taxonomy is like the selection of the house you're building. You look at the specs that a selected, selected architect has designed. Those specs are the framework for your home, just like the taxonomy is the framework and the foundation of your organization's data. If there's a crack in the foundation, the house isn't going to be very sturdy or last very long. So how do we create a marketing taxonomy? Creating a marketing taxonomy involves a wide variety of stakeholders, which vary slightly depending on the taxonomy which you're building and the specific requirements uh, within the organization. But the steps to create and implement a taxonomy can be simplified into about eight, but there are two critical components throughout every step, people and process. Much like when building a house, those two factors can prolong the process immensely and have the most impact on the overall outcome. So let's dive into the people. Who is involved in the process and what role do they play? First, you have the buyers. While it's typically one person writing the check and providing the requirements, there are usually a few others involved in, on the buyer side, be it friends, family, a spouse, children. These are the stakeholders and the end users, the ones living in the house. In building your taxonomy, it's no surprise here that the buyers represent the same thing, the stakeholders, the practitioners, the ones who are going to be using your marketing taxonomy and operating off of the data which it provides. This could be your marketing channel leads, the CMO, the CDO. It's those end users. Next, we have the builder, and that's us. The builder is responsible for overseeing the entire project, making sure all necessary teams are involved, inspections are passed, and the construction of the home is on track. The builder is the only person with that direct line of communication at the start with the buyer to receive the requirements of their new build. Finishes, rooms, layouts, all are provided from the buyer to the builder. They have to be able to translate these requirements to teams in a digestible way to them. Dealing with different skill sets, personnel, dynamic, sounds familiar. And that's because it's what we do when we're building a marketing taxonomy. We need to work across various teams, regions, and translate their requirements into what will become your marketing taxonomy. Then we have the inspectors. Everyone loves the inspectors. And there are a lot in the home buying process. There are a ton of codes the home needs to comply with, and these inspections happen throughout the build. It's not just at the start, and it's not just at the finish. If you waited for all of the inspections till the very end, and if for whatever reason, it didn't pass, that's a lot of wasted time and money, which everyone now needs to start back from scratch. This is like the constant QA process required throughout building your marketing taxonomy. While you're consistently checking in and reviewing it with the buyers, you're also in constant communication with the analytics team and, and the BI teams to ensure that any reporting dependencies are taken into account and will function as expected with the launch of your new taxonomy. Next, we have our contractors, the ones executing and really getting their hands dirty and all the little things involved in the construction of the home. That's our agencies. This will vary based on each organization and how many agency partners they work with and to what extent they work with them, but it's critical that agencies are involved in the process. They have their own internal processes used to execute marketing campaigns on a client's behalf. So when you propose a new marketing taxonomy, you need to take into consideration their workflow in order for a successful launch. Now we're getting into the wiring of the house. If you lay the foundation properly and the frames all align, the structure should seamlessly integrate with external platforms or play nice, if you will. The wiring in our case is going to be the third-party softwares we're using for data collection or campaign execution. And lastly, we have the superintendent. They keep everyone on track. And if you're lucky, you'll have something similar when you build out your marketing taxonomy. This could be a project manager or a customer success manager. It's the person who ensures the success of the build. 
now that we've identified all the key players in the process and what the, each of their roles are, let's talk about the actual process. How do we get from this to this? First, you have to figure out where you want to build your home and what type of home you want to build. Especially in today's climate, this can be the most time intensive portion of the process. And we're only at step one. But I promise you, if you do your due diligence up front, it will pay off tenfold in the long run. While I attributed one seat for the buyer, I did mention oftentimes there's usually more than one person deciding at this point. The partner wants an open floor plan in a good school district. Grandma and grandma, grandma and grandpa want an in-law suite. The kids want to be close to their friends. Dad wants something that's not going to break the bank. Dog wants a big yard he can plan. Everyone has an opinion. And honestly, everyone's opinion matters because at the end of the day, you want a house that they want to live in. The same goes for building a marketing taxonomy. You want to build a, ta a taxonomy that makes sense to the buyer, the marketing stakeholders, a taxonomy they'll use and find useful. This is why the first step in the process is the most critical and shouldn't be ignored. Identify who needs to be involved in the process, set time to understand their needs from a data analytics standpoint, and don't make assumptions. At step one, you're taking an inventory of where the marketers want to build their home, what type of home they want, and most importantly, determining what type of home they need. Ask questions like, walk me through your current workflow when executing a campaign. Are there current pain points in the process? What type of data do you report on? Are there any wish list data points? Do you own the entire process or is there an agency involvement? Once all of these questions are answered across all of the respective teams, you can start to lay out the foundation for your marketing taxonomy. After the inspection, certifications, and much planning, it's time to break ground. You have to build the foundation. So the same concept that we established in step one goes for when you're building the foundation of your data. This is why the first few steps are so critical and so time consuming. While you'll have iterations of your marketing tax taxonomy, new technologies and channels being introduced, business requirements shift over years, if you lay the foundation properly, you can be agile alongside your organization's data needs. And you're not just going to pour some concrete down on a plot of land and hope for the best, right? You need a plan. As you collect requirements and inventory in step one, at this step, you can start to build what I refer to as your data dictionary. This is your master plan. Document the inventory taken and analyze any parallels across teams. From here, outline by channel and by team what the critical data points are they need to capture. Are they channel specific or are they consistent across channels? Typically, I try to identify five to 10 what I consider core fields, which would be aligned across channels, teams, regions. Establishing these core fields helps to ensure a minimum level of consistent reporting across teams. You can always rely on those core fields for a report. A great example is something like campaign name. While campaign name in a specific platform could be specific and nuanced, it could follow agency naming conventions, having an additional organizational campaign name enforces a standard across teams so you can capture overall campaign performance across channels and dissect from there. Something like Black Friday 2020 is a good organizational campaign name since it could be executed across channels. And then a channel specific could be something like Facebook, Instagram, Holiday 2021 Runner, which follows the agency's naming convention. Build your data dictionary at step two and lay that foundation of your data to detail out all of the various channel requirements, input values, and criteria gathered from the various teams in step one. Next, we have the framing. It's time to build the shell of the house. Once you've completed the foundation, you can build upon that by completing the framing. Outline the various rooms, bathrooms, areas for plumbing, electricity. The bones of your taxonomy are the foundational data points aligned across those teams and functions. Once you have the foundational requirements established in step two, 
you can begin to layer in the channel specific needs. Meet with teams to, again, <laughs> uh, to review and align on the core fields and ask follow-up questions. Ask them questions about specific system requirements. Are they using dynamic variables or macros? Are there channel specific fields? Like for email, they might wanna capture subject line. And then if there is an agency involved, uh, start the conversation with the agency partners as well. Do they have specific requirements based on their internal workflows? Next, it's inspection time. You'll go through four rounds of inspections over the course of this phase within the home building process, ensuring the various components are up to code, electricity, HVAC, plumbing, all need to be in compliance in order to continue your build. Otherwise, it's back to step one and two. Doing your due diligence up front is worthwhile in both home building and marketing taxonomy. Told you there were parallels. The same goes for marketing taxonomy here. At this point, you've collected and gathered and iterated. You now have something tangible the teams can review. Sit with each team and review the data dictionary for their respective channels, walk through the workflow and ask for feedback, concerns, opportunities. This step is not just for marketing. You'll also want to review the proposed changes in taxonomy with analytics and any BI teams, ensuring that any downstream impacts are accounted for and to align on an updated timeline or a go-live date. Next in the home buying process is the insulation. Insulation is all about ensuring comfort, consistency, and efficiency when it comes to your home's temperature. Translate that into our marketing taxonomy. We want users comfortable with the workflows. The whole point of the taxonomy is to create efficiency, help alleviate marketers from having to worry about, did I put my tracking code on correctly? So they can spend time doing what they love, marketing, and making your data consistent. At this step, we can start to sort of fine tune some of the workflow. Identify areas of efficiency we may have missed at the first go round. This is very common, especially as marketers get more familiarized and involved in the process. They usually start to brainstorm areas of opportunity with you and collaborate more. Additionally, at this phase, we'll typically see more agency involvement in the same respect. One of the areas of, of efficiencies we see a lot of is naming conventions. So while the primary objective has been to solve for marketing taxonomy, a lot of times as we begin to work with the teams throughout the process, we'll identify areas of opportunity to incorporate naming conventions as part of the exercise as well. Kill two birds with one stone. Next, we would complete the drywall and interior fixtures and start some of those exterior finishes. Now that you've completed any major iterations or changes and passed the bulk of the inspections, it's time to start to pretty things up and make the house start, start to look like the home. While we know it's always what's on the inside that counts when talking data, it really is all about what's on the inside that counts or what's on the back end. While users might think the data dictionary and taxonomy you've built is beautiful and looks clean, if the data is messy or doesn't connect properly to the downstream platforms, it's all for naught. This is where you can work with analytics and BI on any tweaks to the file formatting, do QA on the file delivery, coordinate with the agency teams on their go-live dates and allow them to begin their internal QA process. This is that final walkthrough for the backend data. Even though we check it at every point, this is that last formal QA prior to go-live and the final walkthrough with the end users. Now we can look at the curb review. So at this step, we're finishing that the, the trim on the interior and installing exterior walkways, driveways, making the outside look pretty and really giving it that curb appeal. It's tighten, tightening things up and finalizing all of those to make the house look pretty. Same as we did for the interior, we'll do the same final QA for the exterior a final run through with all of the teams and channels, review the expected workflows, the fields, the use cases, and ensuring everyone is aligned. Finalize your go live date and allow users to test prior to that date. And lastly, it's closing time. The time's come for the final walkthrough. 
At this point, the builder will walk you through your home, call out any minor finishes that, in, that haven't been completed, present you with the punch list, which I learned what that was last week. They're not fun. Uh, additionally, you'll have the final inspection, ensuring the home passes all codes, you'll get the keys, and you'll have a new home. At this step in the marketing taxonomy, after the prior two steps, there will be ongoing QA of the test data teams have been generating. This final walkthrough will be for teams to come with any questions or feedback that may have come up during QA or analytics to raise areas of concern that could be potential blockers for a go live. Uh, but there, if there are no blockers identified at this point, go live is a green and it's time to give marketers the key to their new home. So we understand the people, we understand the process. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to build a marketing taxonomy, but why do you want one? Well, would, would you wanna live here? But seriously, all the motivating factors will vary within each organization as to what drives them or why do they want a marketing taxonomy. But usually it can be boiled down into these five points. Time efficiency. So you're alleviating analytics teams from a lot of times manual ETL that they're doing to clean up data, as well as alleviating marketers from having to tediously apply tracking to tracking codes to their marketing uh, campaigns in hopes to alleviate and increase efficiencies in that process. Um, data reliability and confidence. So you're giving marketers the confidence in the data that they're acting upon. Um, expanding areas of optimization. So when you're finalizing or establishing a marketing taxonomy, oftentimes you're also enriching the data, so adding in additional data points that marketers can optimize off, off of. Um, and then the last two are kind of blended together. So with the evolving technology landscape, we're adding in new softwares, new marketing tactics, feels like daily these days. Um, so it's critical that your marketing taxonomy is agile and easily adaptable. Um, to these changes, whether they be technology changes or personnel changes. So shifts in the organization, new teams coming on board. Having a, a sound marketing taxonomy helps you be flexible and sort of lift and shift uh, along with these changes. And as your organization continues to evolve and grow and add in these new uh, components or variables, um, that marketing taxonomy can grow with it. So thank you for joining today. That's all, folks.